So far, we've discussed two types of storage media, two places you can store information. One is the floppy disk, one is a CD. Both of those are called external storage devices because they're outside of your computer. You can take a floppy disk with you. You can take a CD with you. Whenever you hear CD or floppy disk, think of the briefcase. Now the third important place that you can store information is a location called your hard drive. Whenever you hear hard drive, I want you to think of a file cabinet because the hard drive is actually located inside of your computer and you can't move the hard drive. You'll never take your hard drive out of your computer and take it with you. It's meant to stay inside that computer. Just like a file cabinet. File cabinets, you're not meant, they're not meant to be picked up and taken from your office to your home and back and forth. They're meant to be stationary. Now just like a filing cabinet will store more information than a briefcase, a hard drive inside your computer will store more information than either a floppy disk or a CD-ROM, a CD. Now where is the hard drive located? If you have a desktop, the hard drive is located inside that tower. And once again, you'll never see it. But just trust me, it's located inside that tower. Now, on a laptop computer, the hard drive is located inside that base unit. Once again, you'll never see the hard drive. Just trust me, it's located inside that base unit of the laptop. Now, these hard drives can store a tremendous amount of information. And if you're looking to buy a computer, one of the selling points a salesman will bring up is how much information your computer can store. To give you an idea, information, the amount of information that a computer can store in its hard drive is measured in a unit called gigabytes. Now what's a gigabyte? I don't know. Let's compare a gigabyte to a square foot. If you have a hundred square feet, that's more than 50 square feet of room. If you have a hundred gigabytes, that's more than 50 gigabytes. All you need to know is the relationship. Now if you're just going to be a normal everyday computer user, understand the fact that computers today can store more information than you'll ever need. Unless you're going to be using your computer professionally and you're going to be doing some crazy things like photo editing or making movies or doing something really advanced on your computer, you don't need a supercomputer that can store a tremendous amount of information. The low-end computers that can store 50 gigabytes of information is plenty of room for you. I always say if you're a regular user and you fill up your hard drive where you can't fill up any, you can't take any more information onto your computer, you need to take a vacation because you're using your computer too much. So just understand when you go buy a computer and a salesman says, hey I can give you more gigabytes of space and it's only going to cost you X amount of dollars, you really don't need it unless you plan to get really advanced on your computer. The printer is a very important piece of equipment. The printer is a separate piece of hardware that goes with your computer. Now when I say the term hardware, that's anything you can physically touch. So the monitor that we talked about is a piece of hardware. The keyboard is a piece of hardware. The printer is a piece of hardware. You also hear people talk about software. Software is anything you can't touch. Software would be programs on your computer like games or the tax programs. So hardware, think of it as something you can touch. Software, something you can't touch, just something you can use. So your printer is a piece of hardware. It comes separate from your computer. Once you attach a printer to your computer, what that printer will enable you to do is take what is ever on your computer screen and transfer it to a piece of paper. So printers are used for printing out letters that you've typed up on your computer. Uh, a lot of people use photos. They take pictures with a digital camera today. Transfer those pictures to their computer. 
and then once the computer has the pictures, you can transfer the pictures to a printer. Now when you pick out a printer, one of the most important things to keep in mind is ink usage. How much ink is that printer going to use? Some printers waste ink and they're going to spend twice as much money on ink as another printer. Also keep in mind the price of the ink. Some of these ink cartridges that you can buy for your printer are going to cost a hundred dollars a piece. Some cost fifty dollars, some cost twenty-five dollars. So even more important than the printer itself is how does it use its ink. So when you go to the store to buy a printer, ask the salesman what is the most economical printer when it comes to ink usage and when I have to buy more ink for my printer, how much is that ink going to cost me? Two very important questions. If you go out and you're going to buy a computer, another point that a salesman is going to bring up to you is the CPU, called the Central Processing Unit, or a lot of people just call the CPU the processor for short. The processor on your computer is the brain of your computer. The processor determines how fast your computer is. How much information can your computer process at one time? Now a processor is measured in a unit called gigahertz. What's a gigahertz? I don't know, just a measure of speed. Our cars can drive 60 miles per hour. A computer can go at this speed. So just know that if you buy a computer with 3 gigahertz of power, of processing power, that's more than 1 gigahertz. That's all you need to know. Now keep in mind if you're just going to be searching the internet doing normal everyday tasks on your computer you don't need the supercomputer. The lower end processors today are exceptionally fast. They'll be able to do everything that you need. Now if you're going to get into digital camera work, you're going to be working with a lot of images, video, doing some very advanced things on your computer or playing a lot of these super video games that the kids have today, you might need a bigger processor. But if you're going to be typing up letters, typing up recipes, doing your taxes, if you're going to be searching the internet, you don't need a super processor. And just keep in mind, 3 gigahertz is more than 1 gigahertz of power.